morning, folks. Ron with Pioneer, Central Texas. Do a little evaluation on nitrogen management in corn this time of year. We're at about V8, V9. A big question I get this time of year is, is it okay to fly urea on? If so, how much should I apply? And does, is there any damage caused by uh, any bleep burn or that sort of thing? We're gonna investigate a couple of situations using some regular urea and some coated urea with a hand spreader and see if we can emulate the kind of uh, cosmetic symptoms that you might see from an application of urea. So this particular grower recognized that we got set up, we got a good profile of moisture and this year it looks like we're going to have a chance to potentially have some better than average yields. So one of the things that he did is went down through his fields with a high boy spreader and spread some granulated urea with a safener and uh, added about another 100 units of, or 100 pounds, excuse me, of material. You'll notice that some of these lower leaves that were wrapped up in the whirl when he made that application are exhibiting some, some phytotoxicity due to the leaf burn caused by that urea going into the whirl. You know, a question I get is, can we minimize that using safe in urea? Can we minimize that uh, at different application times? And we're going to do a little bit of a demonstration in a field that didn't have uh, any urea applied to it. And we're going to see if we can kind of emulate what would happen with safener without an applications made at uh, different times of the, uh, of the season or different times of the morning. So folks, uh, we're going to continue our deal here applying uh, granular nitrogen over the top of uh, of corn that's uh, growing about V8 to V10. We're going to make an application here uh, in the morning when the dew's heavy, when there's a lot of moisture, and we're going to use some uh, uh, coated granular urea, and we're also going to use just some regular uh, unsafened or, or unstabilized urea, both uh, to make those applications. We'll make some this morning, and then we'll make some this afternoon. We'll come back a few days later and evaluate whether the what the level of phyto burn was so i've taken and measured off one one thousandth of an acre uh used the scale to uh, measure the amount of product that would be applied to put on a hundred pounds of 4600 which is about 46 pounds of actual nitrogen we'll do that both in coated and uncoated or safened and unsafened urea and uh, we're going to do that this morning with these leaves fairly wet with a lot of water and moisture in the whirl We'll come back and do the same application with the same amounts in the afternoon, and then come back a few days later and evaluate and look at the phytotoxicity or the burn on the leaves. So folks, we're back at the field where we applied the uh, two different types of urea. One was a stabilized urea and one was uh, just normal prilled urea. We put it over the top of corn to look at what effect, what phyto effect it might have on the leaves. And we've got some great results here. So I'm gonna share those with you now. So this was an application that we made in the morning with just regular urea. And you can see a little bit of damage to that outer leaf uh, tissue. It was a little bit wet and damp. Uh, you can see the same thing occurring in this, uh, is this example right here. This was actually the stabilized nitrogen. Uh, one thing that you may notice is a little less distinct uh, burn on the outer edges as opposed to the regular urea like you see right here. Then here is where we came back and made the application uh, in the afternoon after the leaves had dried. And you'll notice there is still just a small tinge of burn on the outer edge. All this tissue that's coming back out that's growing out is all green and lush, even though you might have a little bit of burn to the outer edges of the leaves. That cosmetic effect is very minimal compared to the benefits that you get of the dry nitrogen application. If you don't remember, corn uses about 40% of its nitrogen post-tassel. So anything we can do to spread that application or that nutrient out, make it more available later on during grain fill, definitely benefits the crop. So there you have it, folks. Ron Joyner, field agronomist in Central Texas. Hope this helps. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.